we should have seen this coming. I should have seen this coming. This is embarrassing. It happened with extra virgin olive oil, and now it's happening to our beloved avocado oil right in front of our eyes. 82% of the avocado oils out there that are being sold are either stale, have gone rancid, have gone through lipid peroxidation, or they're mixed with other oils, and in some cases, they're pure soybean oil with an avocado oil label smacked on it. What is this world coming to? Seriously, UC Davis, I commend you for doing this. UC Davis went ahead, took it upon themselves, and said, we're gonna break down 22 different avocado oils. They saw that avocado oil is just getting a tad too popular, and there's probably some economic adulteration and some weird stuff going on here. So what did they do? They broke it down. So 22 samples from six different stores and two online retailers. And they took a look at a few things. And I'll keep it simple because I just want to get angry and I want you to get angry with me on this one because we have a right to be. We've all been kind of screwed, okay? So they looked at free fatty acid, how much of the free fatty acids were liberated because they shouldn't be too much. That shows that they're going rancid. They looked at the fatty acid profile. Like, is this actually avocado oil? Or does it have a profile of another fat? Stuff that's really not that hard to determine. Just nobody's setting a standard to actually do it. Then they also looked at like UV absorbances, like how much chlorophyll is in it. How much has it really been exposed to light and potentially ruined? So let's get into this. I do want to make sure you do please hit that red subscribe button and please hit that bell icon and come back to this video on the daily to help out the algorithm. So even if you don't watch the full video because you don't have time, at least pop in and say hello and leave a comment. And I also want to make sure after this video, you check out Natural Heaven Pasta. Natural Heaven is a hearts of palm based pasta. One ingredient, hearts of palm, and it is epic, epic stuff. So totally keto friendly, super low calorie, only a couple grams of net carbs, and it is just amazing, epic stuff. So make sure you check them out. There's a special link with a special discount because you're watching this video down below in the description. So I'll break down the results of this study first, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Okay, with these 22 samples, 15 of the samples had totally gone rancid, had completely gone bad, five of which were labeled as extra virgin, just completely gone bad. Six of them were completely adulterated, meaning they were mixed with other oils, uh, mainly safflower oil, sunflower oil, or mixed with soybean oil. And three were flat out soybean oil, straight up. They had markers of being close to 100% soybean oil. Now, some of them overlapped. Some of them were rancid plus soybean oil. Some of you consumer-minded people are probably wondering what the good ones were. The two that ended up being pure were Chosen Foods brand and Marianne's brand. Now, I'm even embarrassed because I have recommended avocado oil in countless grocery hauls, but no one could ever know that this was going to be going on until UC Davis brought this to light. So don't hate on me for it. I'm trying here, guys. The thing is, this is frustrating. We should all be embarrassed because I can almost guarantee you've cooked with avocado oil that has probably been weird. <laughs> Between the years of 2014 and 2017, which is data that we can actually track, there has been a demand that has increased over 1 million metric tons for avocado oil. So there's going to be some mischief going on when numbers are that big. Here's where I get frustrated and I just got a vent, okay? How is it that a brand or a company can get in trouble for making the silliest claim, like for example, if someone puts on a label that something may modulate inflammation or they put on the label that something may uh, mildly help something, they go to jail and they get in huge trouble, but they can legally put soybean oil in your avocado oil and not get in trouble? How is that legal? If those same people that put soybean oil in the avocado oil bottle, they don't get in trouble for that. But if they were to dare put something on their label that might be a tad misleading as far as a health claim is concerned, well, then people's lives are at risk and then we're in trouble, right? So then they go to jail. But if you care about your health and you don't want to consume soybean oil and you're trying to consume avocado oil, they don't look at that because the standards are so loose. We all need to step up and we need to make sure there's stricter standards on that, like there is for olive oil. Avocado oil needs the same standards, and I bet that's coming because that was UC Davis's goal, and I'm so proud of them. And it's also near my hometown, so yes, go Aggies. Now let's break down what they looked at. Okay, they looked at the free fatty acids. What happens is free fatty acids are bound to a triglyceride. And when fats start to break down or denature, the free fatty acids separate from the triglycerides. So when a fat starts to break down, the fatty acids break apart away from the triglyceride. 
So what happens is you have an increase in free fatty acids. This is supposed to happen in your body, not supposed to happen in the oil that you're bringing into your body. So normally with like a refined oil, we would see it below 0.1%. Well, in this case, most of them were 0.55%, over five times the amount that it should be, showing that the refined oils had greatly become oxidized and had just completely broken down. Then you look at the extra virgin side, it was just as bad. Standards are a little bit different because with extra virgin, you haven't gone through the refinement process, so you typically have uh, more free fatty acids floating around because they haven't been refined or distilled out, if you want to call it that. Still a big problem, okay? In general, most of the oils were rancid or bad, which is what we're trying to avoid in the first place. So note to self, always buy avocado oil in a dark, dark bottle. However, what good is a dark bottle if it's full of soybean oil anyway? I digress. The other thing they looked at was something that's a lot easier to break down, and that is the fatty acid profile. What are the omega-3 to omega-6 ratios? What are the carbon chains like? There were some huge discrepancies here, okay? For example, most of the oils were 55% linoleic acid. Avocado oil should be like 20% linoleic acid. Definitely some weird mischief going on there. Then when we take it another step further, a lot of these oils had high steric acid content, which steric acid isn't necessarily bad, but it doesn't fit the bill for avocado oil as much. High steric acid, low palmitic acid, and very low oleic acid. Oleic acid is the one I always talk about, the one I'm always saying, eat olive oil, eat avocado oil, because we want oleic acid. Well, the oleic acid was just, just plummeted, almost like, hmm, soybean oil. What's going on here? So the argument that everybody could make as far as the oil companies are concerned is they could say, oh, well, we didn't know. They must go through a weird process after we, after we bottle them and maybe the fats are breaking down and they're changing and they're morphing. There's no real standards to say that they can't say that. So they can. And that's why proving any kind of economic adulteration is so difficult. Can't bring to justice that there's potentially soybean oil or safflower oil in your avocado oil because there's no real standards. That's going to change. Okay. Okay, one other thing that they looked at, well, they looked at a few things. They looked at vitamin E content, but I don't really care about vitamin E. Let's talk about chlorophyll. Okay, chlorophyll is what's going to make your avocado oil green. Well, they found that a lot of these had very low levels of chlorophyll. This one's easy to kind of identify. If you were to go to the store and you were to buy like 10 different avocado oils and you were to pour them onto a white plate, the ones that are greener or deeper green have a higher degree of chlorophyll, which means that more than likely they haven't been exposed to a lot of UV light. UV light does break down oils. So always go for one in a darker bottle so that it's protected from the UV light. But oh wait, it's soybean oil, so who cares? You have to buy it, you have to check it out, and you have to test it yourself. This isn't to say that every brand out there is bad. I know that a lot of them really are putting their best foot forward, but now it comes into question, like, where are they sourcing, right? Some of these brands are just buying avocado oil in bulk from different areas. Fun fact, most of the high quality olive oil was coming out of Mexico. Avocados from Mexico. So I guess the stuff is good there, right? I don't know. Point is, is where are they sourcing it? We have to look at the bigger picture and maybe go up the food chain one. Anyway, I'm getting upset. I gotta go. See you tomorrow.